it's me, Nate, a.k.a. Devil Dog, and I'm back for a, a kind of a unique video here. Uh, this one is dedicated to one of my longtime subscribers on my YouTube channel, who uh, pretty much is from a, a, another country, okay? Um, and um, he was wanting to know exactly how to use Share Factory to make the videos that I make on my channel. Um, now, anyone who knows, every single video I've made on my channel has been made strictly with Share Factory software and maybe uh, when I'm outside of the house a, a handheld handy cam and that's all I use for all of my videos um, and he wanted to know if I could make a tutorial video to help him figure out how to use this software efficiently so here it is um, this is uh, basically for Timoteo Abraham uh, this uh, video is dedicated to you and to anyone out there who actually wants to know how to officially use um, the Share Factory software to pull off some really neat tricks with it. I mean, because a lot of people, they don't tell you this. You have to figure it out on your own. And maybe this tutorial will kind of help you to where you might be able to make a video that's pretty decent as well. Okay, the first thing you want to do naturally is go into the PlayStation Store. And uh, once you go into the PlayStation Store, all you have to do is go up and search engine here and put in Share Factory. And here it is right here. Now keep in mind, along with this, you'll see hundreds upon hundreds. Let me turn this light off here real quick. There, get a little bit better vision there. You'll see a bunch of different free downloadable content here that adds different intros, outros, and music to the Share Factory software that's completely 100% free. Once you download and install this, you basically just load it up like you would a game right here, Share Factory. And once it loads up, which takes a couple seconds, it's not too difficult to figure this out. And then basically off to your side, the first one is for video downloading, second one is for making photos, the third one is for making animated, animated GIFs, then you have your social media aspects, and you can import content. Now import content is the number one way you can actually get stuff uh, from the Handycam if you film somewhere else out on, on here to, to edit it. It does allow you to import content from, I use my Canon Handycam camera that uses basically an SD card that's in it. A 64 gig SD card. And what you do here is how do you transfer the footage and data you have from your camcorder over onto Share Factory? Well, this is kind of a tricky thing, but you will need a laptop or a computer to do this. I have a really rinky dinky cheapo Lenovo laptop. And what you do is at least for my laptop, it doesn't have a, a slot for an SD card. It has a slot for a micro SD, but a not an SD. If you have a more update laptop, you'll probably have a spot where you can just plug this right in. But for my case, I cannot do that. So I had to get a adapter here. This will actually connect the SD card and turn it to where it has a USB. And then you just plug it into the USB port of your laptop and then you take your flash drive that you want to transfer the data of this onto the flash drive so you can put this into your system. And you're probably wondering, well, Nathan, why don't you just plug this directly into the flash, you know, use this and plug that directly into your system and that'll work, right? No, it won't because Share Factory software requires you to have it under folders. So what you want to do is get you a USB drive and you format it with the name Share Factory, one word, all capital words. And underneath that Share Factory file, you open it up and create three folders within that. The first folders will be music, spell the word music. The second folder will be videos, videos, one word. And the third one will be pictures. Once you do that, all you have to do is when you plug this in to the USB in your laptop and you open it up, and turn your computer on, you can take the files from the SD card, drag them over and drop them into the Share Factory SD card file. And when you do that, it'll actually, when you move it to Share Factory, it'll open up and ask you, do you want it in for pictures, videos, or music? And you pick accordingly. Like if you have a video, you drag the file from here 
a video and put it in the video file on the chair factory folder once you do that and you close your computer out and you clear it to where you can successfully remove your things without damaging them then you have your data on your your s you know, your, your your thumb drive then you take the thumb drive and you put it in your system now once you do all that and you have your data downloaded on your USB drive you simply plug your USB drive into the USB port on your gaming system and you can go into the share factory software yet again and download what you just went and put on so let me pull it up here real quick zoom that in I'm gonna back out you have to go back out to the main menu so I'm gonna go exit without saving and under the side menu here, you will see import contents at the very bottom, okay? And what you do is you go down and you import content, and you have a choice of importing your themes, your music, your videos, or your images. So we're going to go to videos. And it'll bring up all the videos and clips that you actually have already downloaded. You have a data file limit. Remember that. If you go over this, it will not let you download anything else. But we're going to go and we're going to go up here. You see right here, import from USB. Go to import from USB. And it will then start searching your, your card. And whatever is on your card, you can then download to Share Factory. And once you do that, these videos will appear on Share Factory for videos you can pick. So basically, once you go to making your video again, go back to my project, any sort of video you've downloaded, when you go to add clip, it will appear. And then you can then pick it. You can then pick whatever video you want and download it and it'll be on the file and you'll be ready to go like boom pick that download it boom there it is and see how it did that I downloaded it because I layered it over now it's a picture in picture let's get into that now this part is best to just show you like this on this little clip here there's also something else known as filters that you can do and then you go into the menu you can see filters and when you click on it then you can add all kinds of wacky filters over top of the video like you're seeing right now everything from photo negative to uh, you know, black light to a uh, festive 8 bit and stuff like that and you can apply it over top of it but we're gonna first start with just doing a project here a new project I'm going to take basically what I just filmed. Let me get that out of the way here. All right. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see all kinds of stuff. First one, uh, which is a plus. Second, is, uh, the square is for some mechanics and stuff like that. Let me see if I can't zoom in and show you here. Yeah. The add maintenance back again touch screen and all that good stuff all right so check this out here first thing you want to do is you want to add content by pressing the x button and it'll ask you right here once again you can add clip add screenshot add track to add music add overlay add filter add layout and add transition we're going to first start by adding a clip and all the clips of everything that you made will appear on here. So I'm going to go and take this one right here. You click on it. Once you click on the video, you can add up to maybe, I'd say, it'll tell you your limit size right here. You can have up to 50 clips at a time or a maximum of 80 minutes of file size. So I'm going to add this one right here that I just recorded, which was the opening to this video. Once you pick X, it has a 1 next to it. And then you just hit the square button to add that clip. Boom. Now you got it on here. Okay, at this point, 
your main thing is the square button. The square button brings up maintenance mode, okay? Square button is your friend. Square button, when you press square, it brings up another menu, okay? And this one has some neat effects as well. You've got time bender, where you can slow down or speed up time. Split the clip, which is self-explanatory. You just split the clip. Trim, you can uh, stretch or uh, lower it. Move clip, you know, move clip around to delete clip, clone clip, pan and zoom. And then you have edit overlays. So we are going to first do a split clip, trim clip, and all that to show you how that works. First of all, split clip. Press X to do it. Then you move your slider around to wherever you want. And when you want it, you hit the X button, and it'll ask you, do you want to split that clip? And you say confirm. And when you do, now it has split that clip into two different clips. All right? Now, once you actually have a clip that is split, you can actually click back on it again using the X button, and it'll bring up, you know, you can split clip again if you want to. But, once again, press X button. While you have a split clip, now you can add, once again, all that stuff again. Add clip, add screenshot, add track two, or transition. We're going to add a transition, which is the one last at the bottom right over here. Transitions can be only placed on a split clip. Sometimes it has to have a certain amount of time to it. Because, as you can see, there is a set amount of time for each of these. That one is 3 seconds. That one's 2.64 seconds. So your clips have to be long enough for you to actually add one of these in. So I'm going to go and add this one that's 2.6. Boom. It's already on there. That's it. It's already on there. You see the little arrows there? Now I have added a split clip. Let's check it out. Let it play. Boom. And that's basically how to do... So let's speed it up two times speed. Now below the two times speed, now watch, this is it sped up. <laughs> A time bender, you can go. And below here you'll see step and smooth. Now what that does is it'll do it frame by frame or it will smooth it. The slower it goes, it makes a blur effect. The faster it goes, it makes a blur effect as well. So if we go to smooth, then you won't really notice much difference on this. But if I change the time bender to four times speed, you won't notice much as out either. See how it jumps around. The uh, slow and smooth seems to only really work if you're going super slow. So if you slow it down, then you'll get this almost like a blur effect. Let me do it half speed here. <laughs> and that is basically how you use the editing software to take clips um, with your camera. Now, if you're wondering what camera I'm actually using when I'm not using my Handycam, I will show you. Basically, what I am using, 98% of the time when I'm filming a video here at my house, is I'm using a PlayStation iToy camera that plugs into the USP of your PlayStation 4 system. This has microphones and it has cameras on it. That's what I use to film my footage when I'm in my apartment. The picture-in-picture -picture mode is achieved very simply. Once you have a file that is on here, let me delete that. Once you have your one clip, you can bring up by pressing X under square there you go, and you can go to Add Track 2. Okay? At this point, you can add Track 2. By picking Add Track 2, you can add other stuff like your own music um, or add another clip. And by doing that, you're basically adding that clip on top of it. And when you do that, it actually creates like a picture-in-picture, -picture, which is really kind of weird. As you see here, now you got a picture in picture. Now under track two, you got to create like this, like a totally different thing in itself. And this is another set of menu options. 
You can do everything like you did before. Move clip, trim clip, uh, clip split clip. But it's got a couple extra options. It's got a PIP layout. Sorry, picture in picture layout. This allows you to place it in several locations. Top right, bottom right, bottom left, top left, center. You can have full screen that overrides the original side-by-side, -side, offset, and swivel. Let's do a side-by-side -side and see what happens. At this point, boom. Now it has turned it into a side-by-side. -side. And you'll have both playing at the same time. Now with all the videos that you download, you're probably thinking, well, how are you like recording this video right here? Well, I, like I said, I have my iToy camera, my PlayStation camera plugged into the system, and you pick um, track two. It's a, a icon on there that says track two, and when you start recording, you can record your footage like I am right now, and once you have that, it'll be on your Share Factory system's uh, list of uh, content, and then you can pick that as a clip. That is the key thing. You've got to record this first, and then once you do that, it'll appear as a clip um, then you can actually go ahead and use it as a clip and um, you know the other thing is like to add music it's the same way to add music once you have a clip up uh, you have multiple different options including editing but one is apply music now if you go to apply music then it will bring up your list of different music that you have once again if you have music that you actually transferred over onto your flash drive using your um, your you know any way you get your music you can actually have your own custom music on here as well and basically you just pick it and you can stick it right over um, your video and there's options for the music as well you have a fade in which is self-explanatory it fades the music in and you can have a fade out you can split the music and you also have different volume adjustments so you can raise or lower, lower the volume because sometimes you want to have the music louder uh, than the background and sometimes you want to have your uh, video be louder than the music so you have to adjust that accordingly and I recommend get yourself a headset or something that you can put and listen to it because if you just play it back on the TV screen you don't get this the same quality sound so use a headset to check to see if your balance is uh, you know up to your standards the way you want it now uh, along with all that uh, you also have a very simple thing which is uh, zoom at any time uh, on a clip Keep in mind, each clip it'll do this for. You can't just have it zoom in and out on something um, throughout the whole video. You have to have it set for a clip. So let's say at certain clips I want it to be zoomed in, like right here. Um, you uh, split the clip to where you have a different clip, and then you can pick that, and you can zoom it in and, and out and stuff like that. And um, you know, you, the more you mess with it, the more you'll get affiliated with how it works. Now, the other neat thing you can do is knowing as edit, editing in overlays. That's how you put uh, your stickers, your images, um, anything else. Like if you have downloaded uh, uh, pictures or images that you made uh, that you download using the USB. Um, also, you can use different text and stuff like that and overlay them over top of your video that you have. And you can do it in multiple layers as well. So you can do it like so many different times. And uh, I haven't had it really to where it stopped me from adding layers. So it seems like almost an unlimited amount of layers, but it just takes time to do that. Um, and you can get some pretty neat stuff that happens like this. The beginning animation allows you to do different stuff. You can have it fade in. You can have it wipe in. You can have it fly in. You can have it pop in. Randomly as well. You can have it slide into the left. And all kinds of neat stuff. Middle animations are a little bit different. You can have it like marquee, you can have a rainbow, you can have it bounce, you can have it drift slightly, you can have it pulse, you can have it spin. And at the end, ending animation is the same as beginning animation. You have fade out, wipe out, roll out, and so forth. And that's how you basically do the text for it. Uh, the more you use it, the more you'll get more affiliated with it, the little things. And don't worry if you screw up the first couple times. Uh, more than likely you will, but as long as you have the data backed up, if you did actually have it on the, the, your thumb drive, your USB drive, you can always just put this back in and re-download it and you're fine. It's not going to delete it from this thing. Um, but honestly, the more you mess with it, the better you'll get. Now, once you get done editing all this stuff together, then what you want to do is press the Options button. That brings up another set of menus that actually will help you do a lot of certain things. It will actually allow you to create a thumbnail. The thumbnail is the little picture that you see at the beginning of the video or wherever you place it. Whatever you have it set 
on the, your um, creation at the time when you hit that button, the two thumbnail, it will take that as a screenshot and that will be your thumbnail. So if I stopped right here and hit the button and hit thumbnail, it would make this the thumbnail. Okay, so it doesn't really matter where you're at uh, for that. The other thing is you can also export to gallery. Now, when you do that, it will compile your video and upload it to your gallery with all the stuff that has been edited. All your edits, all your cuts, all your music, all your effects that's added. Once you're done with your creation, you want to export your video to gallery. By doing that, then when you go into Share Factory, your video you created will be there and ready to go and you can you know make more tweaks to it if you want or you can hit the button and upload it and that's how you actually get it up on the YouTube and stuff is you have to link your YouTube account uh, your um, Google account to your PlayStation net uh, system and once you do that uh, you can upload by pressing a button and it will upload your video on your YouTube channel but as you see it um, kind of seems a little bit um, overly complicated at first but once you get the hang of it you realize it's actually really not that difficult to do and the more you mess with it the better you'll actually get and the more um, you know quickly you'll almost like learning how to text it becomes muscle memory uh, where you know where to go what to go and how to add a clip how to drag and, or you drag and drop it how how to you know you know split it and and like I said as long as you follow these steps you can pretty much make a video fairly easily on here and uh, really in the end um, you know if, if you have your gaming system and you have it linked up to different uh, sites as well it won't let you link it to Facebook no more it used to let you do that um, but you can link it to like Twitter and you can also link it to YouTube and um, also you can just upload it to the PlayStation Network to where other people can actually see the videos that you make and um, once again it's very simple and easy to do that as well and uh, well, once you figure it out you should have no problem actually making decent videos. I've been at it for a long time and I've never used anything else than that for every video I've ever made. Honestly, that's how I've done every single thing. It's nothing more than the Share Factory software and I do use a computer, but that is strictly only to transfer the data over from the uh, you know SD card to the thumb drive to put the data into the gaming system. That's all I do. And it works the same way with PlayStation 5 as well. Um, in the end, I hope this video helped you. I hope it actually led to you um, figuring out how to use uh, the software of ShareFactory. If there's anything I missed uh, letting you know, please leave in the comments below. Please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And once again, here at Devil Dog Gaming, we always end our videos by saying, have fun, play hard, and remember people, the devil is in the details. Peace out. Next time.